Hey guys, hello, good evening to well to you all. Thank you so much for being part of this class once again. So it's really nice to see you before I start the class. Let me ask you, can you hear me clearly? Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Oh. Okay, probably now. Can you hear me? Okay, it was my earphones. They were like hanging down. So that's probably one. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, as I was saying, it's so nice to see you once again. And um, well, I'm so happy to see you. We are almost finishing the classes, guys. We just have two more classes and we are going to be done, okay? So uh, it's going to be just tomorrow and then following day, and that's gonna be all. So uh, I don't know if you have any question regarding to the next module or something that you would like to, to know, or you already know what you have to do for the next month. Because I got some instructions today about some people getting some documents about it so I don't I don't really don't know how that how that works but if you have any question let me know so I can ask to human resources before you go to uh, to the next module obviously so uh, but yesterday guys we saw something related with the countable and non-countable nouns I know that we uh, that was a really tough topic because it was a lot of information and it was kind of kind of difficult to understand I mean there were a lot of vocabulary a lot of words or some nouns that can be used in very different ways and um, probably for some of you what's kind of difficult but we are going to try to resolve all the doubts or something like that. And remember that for today, we have, uh, we still have some exercises, right? Do you remember that? Do you remember the exercises, guys? Can you guys hear me or am I talking to myself? I feel that I'm talking to myself because I don't, I don't see any action from you. So uh, did you work on the exercises? Is that what I was asking? Did you complete the exercises or not? Being honest. Honest. Did you complete them all or not? Esa no la pude completar yo, teacher. No? Solo las siguientes. This one? Sí, esa sí. And what about this one? Esa también. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this one, uh, it was just about just writing some sentences with, um, with some, any, or a, or n. So it was up to you. So, uh, the other ones, what about the other ones? I just know when Ajansi said that she couldn't complete part number one, but what about the other ones? Did you complete it or not? Did you work on that? No. No, you didn't? Was that you, Elvis? No, I don't. Oh my God, what's going on, guys? So you didn't. So we are going to do that and we are going to do it like improvise. Vamos a improvisar, right? Because probably some of you didn't complete it and I'm sure about it. So it's seguro que la mayoría no lo hizo. So um, let me see. Uh, we're going to start with part number one, uh, sentence number two. And I'm going to ask Ana Maria to see how you can give me an example. 
So as you can see, we have an example over there. So take that into account and try to give me uh, the sentence. Ay, solo escuché mi nombre, teacher, pero no, no lo entendí muy bien. Pero supongo que lo que espera es que resolvamos. Yes, set question okay. number two, and you will have to also give me an answer. La, pre una, la pregunta y la respuesta. So, how many vegetables does she eat? <coughs> Um, yes, she does. Is it correct to say how many vegetables does she eat? No entendí que los vegetales eran, eran, este, ¿cómo se dice? Uncountable. Entonces yo puse, yo puse, how much vegetable does she eat? Eh, en la respuesta puse, she eat too much vegetable. That's good. That's very good. Is that you? Is that you? Yes, right? Yes, teacher. Yes. Okay, perfect. That was very good, actually. Thank you so much for that. And that was, that was correct, actually. Okay. So thank you for that. What about you, Elias? Number three, please. Yo le escribí how much diet cola does she drink? Okay, how much diet cola does she drink? Okay, and what was your answer? Y, y la respuesta que escribí fue she does drink some diet cola. She does drink. said she does drink mm -hmm. some diet cola. Is that what you have? Sí, así escribí. Okay, the other ones. Questions for the other ones. ¿Hay algo correcto o incorrecto en esta oración? El... The auxiliary verb. The auxiliary. So, uh, Elias, in this case, we cannot use does in the sentence. Why? Because utilizamos do and does only for questions, no for sentences. Okay? So, uh, the other ones, guys, how would the answer be then? ¿Cuál sería entonces la respuesta si no tenemos que utilizar does? She drinks some diet cola. She drinks some diet cola. Very good. So now that you said that, Elvis, go ahead mm -hmm. and help me with part number two. Uh, okay. Question number four. Okay. How much pasta does he eat? <laughs> she, uh, he eats um, a lot of pasta. He eats a lot of pasta. Very good. Sarah Elizabeth, number five. Teacher, sorry, no estuve en la clase de ayer y no entiendo qué están haciendo. Oh, okay. It's okay. Don't worry. Claudia Iraeta, number five. Okay. <clears throat> Yo puse how much tomato does he eat? Y la respuesta es, he eat some tomato. So you said how much tomatoes? Yes. Okay. And re repeat the, the, the sentence, your answer. He eats some tomatoes. Okay, great. What about you, Anayansi, number six? 
teacher, pero es de, y, ahí, y ahí está bien how much tomatoes. That was, uh, I, I was going to ask you that after the last one, after we okay. finished part number six. But now that you ask that, I'm going to ask you for you, all of you in general, is it correct to say how much tomatoes does he eat? All of you guys. Ayer nos dio unas, unas, unos ingredientes, digámoslo así, que nos dijo que podían ser este, contables o incontables. Entonces, yo lo que entendí es que el tomate era, este, era contable, ¿verdad? Dentro de los slides que usted puso. Uh -huh. Entonces, yo le puse, how many tomatoes does he eat? And that is correct, actually. Um, well, let me see. Before, before I tell you something else, uh, it starts to rain a lot over here. So I don't know if you can guys hear me, like clearly with no background noise. Hello? No se escucha el ruido del, del, de la lluvia, solo su voz. Creo que no tendríamos problemas en ello. Oh, okay, perfect. Yes, because it is started to rain a lot. So I can still listen to the rain falling down, but I don't know if you were able to understand what I was saying. But thank you so much for that. So continuing with the class, guys, as I was, uh, I was as Lisette was saying, tomato, it's part of countable and sometimes uncountables as well. Remember that yesterday I said that some nouns can be part of both things. It means countable and uncountable, okay? So in this case, we can use tomato as countable. So we can say how many tomatoes does he eat? So that is correct what you said, you said okay? So, um, with that being said, let's go to part number six. Ana Yancy, can you help me with that? Okay, yo lo puse así, teacher. How much beer does that drink? He drink. Y la respuesta es, he doesn't drink any beer. Any beer. So yes. is it correct to say how much beer? The other ones, please. Chicos, los demás también necesito que me den sus opiniones. Generalmente solo escucho Ana Yancy, Elvis, Sara, eh, Lisette y algunos que otros por ahí que siempre participan. Los demás, rara ocasión escucho que digan algo. So please, try to participate. Okay, Oh. So, with that being said, oh, no. thinks, Anna Yancy said that she thinks that it's correct to say how much beer does he drink. So I'm asking you for you in general, all of you, is it correct to say how much beer does he drink? It is correct. Okay. Yes. It is correct. Yes, yes it is. Okay. Yes, teacher. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Anayansi. So now we're going to part number three. And uh, Brenda Villeda, I will need your help on number seven, please. Eh, creo que es how much um, vegeta vegetables does he eat? How much let me ask you, Brenda, vegetables, is it countable or non-countable? Non-countable. The other ones, do you agree to what she said? Están de acuerdo con lo que ella dijo? Yes. 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 So, vegetables are uncountable. Incountable. Incontable. 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 Okay, very good. So, 
Let's go to part number eight. Maria Luz and Nieto, can you please help me with that? Or number eight, please. How much hamburgers does he eat? He doesn't eat. Ahí si tengo duda en la respuesta. So you said how much hamburgers? All of you guys in general, is that correct to say how much hamburgers that he eat? No. So, is no. How, many? How, many? how many? How many hamburgers? How many hamburgers does exactly. he eat? Porque estamos hablando de hamburguesas, okay? How many hamburgers does he eat? So how will the answer be to that question? Elizabeth Campos, do you have any idea on how we can answer to that question? ¿Cómo podemos responder esa pregunta? Uh, how many are hamburger? Oh. Yes. Yes. He some hamburger. Say it. Well, what did you say? He eats some hamburger. He eats some hamburgers. That's good. Okay. So uh, let me see. I don't know what time. Just let me double check right here. Okay, um, I'm checking guys and I see that we're still having some problems with the countable and uncountables. Veo que por ahí seguimos teniendo problemas con los countable and uncountables. Please guys, I just going to give you an advice. Solo le voy a dar un consejo, ¿verdad? Try to study. Si tenemos aunque sea unos 10 minutos, try to read some information or to look some information. Because you know, next module, ustedes saben, en, en el próximo módulo, van a ir a intermedio. En intermedio se ven cosas completely different, okay? So it's better for you to completely understand these topics. Es importante que entiendan a completamente esos temas. If not, you will have some problems next module. Si no van a tener algunos problemas en gramática en el módulo 100. So that's my advice for you, okay? So, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Did you say something? Oh, okay. Uh, so now Shayla, I will ask your help uh, with this part, number one, number two, number three, please, go ahead. Okay, uh, number one, milk, and uncountable. Uncountable, do you guys agree, lo demás de acuerdo que es uncountable milk? Yes. Great, yes. number yes. two. Number two, room. Room. Room, sorry. Um, countable. Oh. Those are countable, see? ¿sí? The other ones, um, do you agree? Los demás, de acuerdo con que es countable? Yes, countable. yes. Perfect. What about number three, Shayla? Number three, um, butter. Butter. Uh, butter. 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 Mm -hmm. Is, um, Uncountable. Is that countable? You said? Uncountable. 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 The other ones, do you agree? Yes, I agree. Yes. 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 Uncountable. Uncountable. So, guys, la última vez les dije que hay que tener cuidado cuando pronunciamos esta palabra, ¿ok? Por favor, porque si esta palabra no la pronunciamos bien, estamos hablando de una parte de nuestro cuerpo, ¿verdad? 
Así que, please, be careful with the pronunciation. Vale. Si no van a estar diciendo una cosa que va a ser un poco vergonzosa para ustedes. Ok? So, we say butter, ok? Butter. 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 That's the way we say it, ok? Perfect. Thank you so much, Sheila. Now, Maria Luz de Nieto, four, six, four, five, and six, please. Maria Luz de Nieto, can you hear me? Eh, perdón, es que se me cortó, se cortó la llamada. Hola. It's okay, number four, five, and six. Okay. Four song, uncountable. Uncountable. Music, music, ahí sí, de hecho, tenía que preguntarle porque tengo duda, pero para mí, uncountable. Si se refiere a la música como tal, si se refiere a una específica, pues no sé. Pero en música como tal, un countable y... Y la... Main, no sé cómo se dice. Minutes. Minutes, countable. Ok, para los demás que estuvieron en la clase yesterday. <laughs> music, what do you think? Is that countable or non countable? Un countable. Un countable. Uncountable. Uncountable. Very Uncountable. good. So, uh, Erika, seven, eight, and nine, please. See, uncountable. Shield. I don't remember what this shield. If you if you say chill, uh, if you say it all like that, cuando mm -hmm. tú me dices esa palabra, yo entiendo que lo que me estás diciendo es esto, chill. Chill. But chill. this word we child. say child. A child. Child. So is that countable or uncountable? Child is el singular para niño. Um, countable. 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 And oh, perfect. And the last one. And K. Key. Countable. Key. Countable. Key. That's countable. Very good. So we're going to leave that there. Vamos a dejar ahí, guys, because today we still have to check the today's topic. Okay. So once again, if you did not understand well this topic. Please try to study at home, guys. Please. That's my only suggestion for you, okay? So, um, for today's, uh, today's class, we are going to see something that is um, probably for some of you is going to be easy, for some of you is going to be difficult. Have you ever heard about adverbs of frequency? ¿Alguna vez han escuchado de adverbios, adverbios de frecuencia? Do you know what that is? No, no teacher. teacher. No teacher. No. Okay. So today we are going to learn a little bit about adverbs of frequency. Okay. So to start with that, we have here some kind of explanation and some examples to introduce some parts of the adverbs of frequency. Le llamamos adverbios de frecuencia, guys, porque con ellos nosotros decimos Evidentemente, con qué frecuencia hacemos algo. Example, um, let me see. Um, Sarah Elizabeth, can you help me reading the lines, the explanation? La pequeña definición arriba, please. Okay. Uh, we use some adverbs to describe how frequently with the an activity does no these are called adverbs of frequency and include okay and thank include. you so much so guys le llamamos adverbios de frecuencia porque nos permiten saber con qué frecuencia realizamos una actividad eh, en estos tenemos Always, que ese siempre lo utilizamos para decir siempre, es, es el 100%. Quiere decir que siempre lo hacemos. 
usually, 90%, usualmente, normally, 80%, and generally, generally. Listen to the pronunciation. Normally and generally are both the same. Son sinónimos, so they got the same meaning. Normalmente o generalmente, okay? Often, esta palabra de acá, we can say it and we can pronounce it in two different ways. Way, uh, the first, the first uh, pronunciation, we can say often or we can say often. Es lo que significa que en una de ellas vamos a pronunciar la T y en otra no. Pero both pronunciations are correct. Ambas pronunciaciones son correctas, ¿ok? So I can say often or I can say often, ¿ok? Often and frequently. Frequently, ¿ok? Muy a menudo o frecuentemente. 70%, 70%. Sometimes. Y quiere decir algunas veces el 50%, 50%. Occasionally, occasionally, ocasionalmente, 30%, 30%. Seldom, 10%, que significa rara vez. Hardly ever, hardly ever. Eh, it's the same like. Eh, de vez en cuando, hardly ever, or rarely, 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 raramente. That got the 5%. And obviously, never. That never means nunca, okay? 0%. So, with that being said, guys, I will need some help uh, with the examples. Example number one is going to help me, Juliana. Example number two, Jacqueline Melendez. Example number three, Erika Cepeda. Example number four, Elias. Number five, Ana Maria. Number six, Ana Yancy. Number seven, uh, Maria Luz de Nieto. Number eight, Elvis. And the last one is going to be Miriam Erazo. So go ahead. I always sleep after class. I always sleep after class. Okay, that's good to change your sentence. Very good. Number two. I usually walk to work. I usually walk to work. Very good. Thank you. Number three. I normally get good mark. Very good. Number four. I often read in bed at night. Okay. Thank you. Next one. I sometimes sing in the shower. In the shower. Okay. The next one. I, uh, I occasionally go to bed late. Later. I occasionally go to bed late. Very good. Late. Thank you. And the next one. I seldom put salt on, on my food. Thank you. The next one. I hardly ever get angry. I hardly ever get angry, okay? And the last one. Vegetarians never eat meat. Vegetarians never eat meat, okay? Very good. So, um, those are the general or some examples or the most common ones, adverbs of frequency that we use in the English language. But, I will also give you some, uh, some pattern or some formulas, algunas formulas that we need to follow in order to know a little bit about grammar, okay? So here we have, tenemos una formula. We have a formula right here. First of all, subject plus a number of 
Yes. Perdón, perdón. No me queda claro qué quiere decir adverbios de frecuencia. O sea, ¿a qué se refiere en sí? Adverbios de frecuencia lo utilizamos para decir algo o para saber con, o para decir con qué frecuencia realizamos una actividad. Por ejemplo, yo siempre como o yo nunca como, yo generalmente voy a tal lugar, yo rara vez hago esto, yo ocasionalmente aquello, yo casi nunca, yo usualmente, yo normalmente. That's what it is. Oh, sí. Gracias. Okay, perfect. So, uh, now with the formula, I was saying que podemos, la forma en la que podemos formar una oración utilizando un adverb of practice. We have the subject, el sujeto, plus an adverb of frequency, plus the main verb, and obviously the complement. Como vemos acá en la oración, dice, Daniel always passes his exams. ¿Sí? ¿Cuál es el sujeto? Daniel. What is the adverb of frequency? Always. What is the main verb? Passes. And what is the complement? His exams. Okay. This is the way, esta es la forma en que vamos a crear oraciones using adverbs of frequency. But there's another way. Ahí existe otra forma. Podemos utilizar el verbo to be. And here we have the formula says subject plus the verb be plus the adverb plus a complement. We have the example, he is always happy. Si nos fijamos, en este caso de acá, en la primera fórmula, el adverbio se pone antes que el verbo principal. Pero cuando usamos el verbo to be, el adverbio se pone después del verbo to be. Okay? So we say, he is always happy. So are you following me, guys? ¿Están siguiendo? Yes. Are you understanding? Yes. Yes, yes. 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 yes professor. Yes, teacher. Yes. So now, we're going to have more, uh, more information about it. Let me see. Uh, I'm going to ask. Elizabeth Campos, can you help me, please, reading all this part hasta acá? Hey, Usually, normally, often, frequent, frequent, come frequently, sometimes, occasionally, occasionally, I like to eat Thai food, but okay. we, but but we cannot use. Huh? Use the following at the beginning of a sentences. Always, seldom, rarely, hardly, ever, never. ¿Qué es lo que significa eso? Que los, verb los adverbios de frecuencia tales como usually, normally, often, frequently, sometimes, and occasionally, siempre los podemos usar al inicio de una oración. We have the example right here. Occasionally, I like to eat Thai food. Ocasionalmente me gusta comer comida tailandesa. Thai food. Yes. Pero existen adverbs of frequency that we cannot, we cannot use at the beginning of a sentence. Nunca podemos utilizar los siguientes adverbios de frecuencia al inicio de una oración. Those are, ellos son, always, seldom, rarely, hardly ever, and never. Estos nunca los podemos utilizar al inicio. Yo no puedo decir, always I like to eat Thai food. No tiene sentido. No puedo decir, siempre yo como comida tailandesa. Para nosotros en español, nosotros entendemos eso. Para nosotros estaría correcto si decimos siempre yo como. 
but in English is not correct, okay? So keep this information in mind. So now, let me see. Um, let me see who else. Jonathan Cordova. Help me read this part, please. This part over here. We use hardly ever and never we mostly no negative verbs. Excellent. Have... No, leave it there. Leave it there. Thank you, sir. Um, algo que tenemos que, que, que recordarnos siempre, chicos, es que aunque never significa nunca, no lo vamos a utilizar con negativos. Siempre lo vamos a utilizar en oraciones afirmativas. ¿Sí? Oraciones afirmativas que al final tendrán un sentido negativo. Example. If I say, she hardly ever comes to the parties. ¿Qué entiende? ¿Qué entiende? Or what do you understand by that sentence? What do you understand if I say, she hardly ever comes to the party? Exactly. And if you see number two, it says they never say thank you. Ellos nunca dicen Ellos gracias. Nunca dicen gracias. I cannot say, no es posible gramaticalmente in English, decir they don't never, they don't never. Eso sería un error gramatical malísimo. So we cannot, porque estaríamos negando doblemente. So remember. Como, como never, una tautología. Exactamente. O sea, como ya. Como que dice mucho mejor. <ríe> o, o cuando dicen más mejor. <ríe> exactly. Estamos doble, doblemente repitiendo la misma cosa. So remember, hardly ever and never we are going to use them in in positive, not negative. Okay? So, uh, let me see. Miriam, help me reading the last part. Please. We use ever in question a negative uh, statement. I have you ever no, mm, no veo por ese puntito rojo. I'm sorry. I have you ever been to New Zealand? I haven't ever been to. Es que, ¿Cómo se pronuncia esa? Sutherland. Sutherland. The same has I have never been Sutherland. Okay. La diferencia, chicos, entre never y ever es como. Eh, ever means alguna vez alguna vez y en de forma negativa significa eh, es lo contrario de never o sea si yo voy a decir si yo quiero utilizar y decir nunca es nunca he estado de forma negativa yo puedo utilizar ever aquí sí puedo utilizarlo de forma negativa que never sería eh, un sinónimo de never. Pero cuando lo utilizo de forma negativa, yo ya no voy a utilizar never, sino que voy a decir ever. Que siempre va a significar como nunca. ¿Sí? Son sinónimos. That's why it's very important that we know the difference. Es por eso que es importante que sepamos cómo utilizarlos para no cometer estos errores, ¿ok? Example, sí. recuérdese, en la forma afirmativa o en preguntas, ever significa alguna vez, pero si yo lo utilizo de forma negativa, es igual que yo esté diciendo never, ¿sí? Uh -huh. Con la diferencia que aquí sí estoy utilizando negativo. ¿Es that clear? Estamos todos en la misma página, en the same page. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes teacher. Yes. Pero en este caso, este, como aquí se está usando el verbo have, entonces, un ejemplo con el otro verbo, porque a veces eso es lo que nos confunde, tal vez una palabrita, un verbo, 
Okay. En este caso. Teacher. Yes. Podría transformar la oración They never say thank you usando el ever. Oh, I ¿Se, puede, ¿Se puede transformar? For example, yes, we can, we can change that and we can say They don't oh, They don't ever say thank you. ¿Sí? Can you see that? Porque estoy utilizando acá un auxiliar que me da la forma negativa. Yo ya no pongo never, sino que yo digo ever. ¿Sí? Porque aquí estoy utilizando un negativo. No podría decir they don't never, porque entonces estaría negando dos veces. ¿Sí? Yes. Okay. All right. So now I think that we're clear. Um, according to... To your answer, Sarah. In this case, in este caso, ever su solamente va a ser utilizado en el presente perfecto. Sí, que es este tiempo que estamos viendo acá. Eh, en estos momentos, quizás you don't have any idea about what that is. Quizás no tienen una idea de qué es lo que sea el presente perfecto. But probably next module you will understand. Eh, en este caso solo se los estoy poniendo de ejemplo para que en el momento que se vean el present perfect sepan que solo en ese tiempo van a utilizar el ever, ¿ok? Eh, cuando utilicemos el presente perfecto o cuando ustedes quieran utilizar eh, o negar el mismo ejemplo que acabamos de ver acá. Que dijimos, they don't ever, ¿sí? In that case. But most of the time, la mayoría de ocasiones será utilizado en el presente perfecto. El presente perfecto tiene esta, eh, esta misma eh, eh, como fórmula, esta estructura. El nombre, el auxiliar have. El verbo en pasado participio, que eso lo, lo van a aprender en el próximo módulo when you go to intermediate, okay? But now this is just information for you to know about it before going to the next module, okay? Are we clear now on that? Yes. Yes, teacher, ya más claro. Okay. Yes, teacher. Perfect. So now we're going to go to the, to the position of the other verbs in a sentence. We already saw that before. Ya vimos esto antes. And this is a reminder. This es una vez más. Solo un poco para que vayamos entrando y agra. This is the position of the other verbs. Esta posición que siempre van a tener los adverbios. Si estamos utilizando, eso es lo que quiero que les quede claro. Si estamos utilizando, we are using other verb, otro verbo que no sea el to be, ¿dónde va a ir el adverbio? Después del sujeto. El subject. Antes del verbo principal. Uh, Ante okay. el verbo principal. So what, is, what happens if I'm using the verb be? ¿Qué pasa si estoy utilizando el verbo to be? Where do I have to put the other? The other goes after. Goes after the verb be. So I think that we are clear on that. Ya, eh, creo que estamos claros en eso, right? Yes? Yeah. Right. Um, cuando tenemos verbos auxiliares o eh, model verbs, en inglés le llamamos model verbs, verbos modales, tales como can, would, might, could, ha, will, shall, should, que los vamos a ver en, bueno, Vamos a ver dos de ellos, la, eh, la clase de mañana y los demás, pues sí se ven en la fase número tres o módulo número tres. But now this is just information, es información para que ustedes ya la sepan antes de ir al módulo tres. Ok, 
aquí cambia un poco. It, it changes a little bit. So in this case, when we have a model verb, it's going to change. When we have a model verb, the formula is going to be a little bit different. When we have a model verb, the formula will be the following. Subject plus auxiliary or model verb plus the adverb plus the main verb. Example, she can sometimes beat me in a race. Si se fijan aquí el auxiliary o el verbo modal es can. We have, I would hardly ever be unkind to someone. Aquí el verbo modal es would. Siempre que haya un verbo modal o un auxiliary, el adverbio va a ir después de ese verbo modal. One question. Go ahead. Eh, ¿Por qué se le llama verbo modal? Se le llaman verbos uh -huh. modales porque eh, nos infringen o nos dan una... Eh, pueden cambiar al verbo que preside. ¿Sí? No tienen en sí una... Eh, solo porque se llama verbo modal va a ser de... Lo vamos a tomar como que nos va a dar un modo. No. En este caso se le llama verbo modal simplemente por cosas gramaticales, mas no significa que esto vaya, eh, como tengo un significado propio. Lo único que hacen los verbos modales es modificar al verbo principal. Por ejemplo, ¿alguien me puede decir cuál es el verbo principal en esta, en this sentence, this sentence en la number one? Can. Can. No. Can. It. Sometimes. El verbo modal es can. Ahí, mm. si nosotros, si bien nosotros sabemos que can puede ser utilizado como un verbo normal, en ese caso es necesario que sepamos cuándo va a ser un verbo modal y cuándo no. Pero eso lo vamos a aprender mañana. So, si lo quiere aprender, así está la clase de mañana, okay? So, um, but in this case, en este caso, mañana vamos a aprender cuándo se puede utilizar como verbo modal y cuándo se puede utilizar como verbo principal. So, in this case, in, in sentence number one, el verbo principal no es can. En este caso, can está utilizándose como verbo modal y el verbo principal es beat. Beat. Perfect. What about sentence number three? En la oración número tres. What is the main verb? ¿Cuál es el verbo principal? Sí. 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 And what is the model verb? Might. 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 Very good. What about the last one? What is the main verb? B. 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 What is the B. model verb? Cold. Oh. Oh. Good. Okay. Good. Very good. So now, guys, with that being said, con esa explicación, are we clear? Estamos claros? Do we still have any question or something? Honestamente, yo no. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were going Sorry. to be honest, I'm not going to be honest. Honestly, en realidad no. no. Digamos que lo del verbo eh, eh, me confundió, me confundió. Which part? What part? Tell me, I can try to explain. La parte donde mm, tenemos que utilizarlo o no sabemos en qué momento utilizarlo. Pues, digamos que lo que me ha quedado como que me confunde es por qué se le llama así. Digamos que cuando yo tengo una explicación del por qué se le llama así, como que me queda un poco más claro de cuándo o por qué utilizarlo. Eh, eh, pero este... We have, tenemos muchos verbos modales, como les dije, tenemos can, tenemos would, tenemos might, tenemos could. Por ejemplo, uno de los más difíciles, or probably one of the most difficult to understand, o uno de los más complicados para poderlo entender es can. 
Porque nosotros ya sabemos que can significa what. What does poder. 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 poder? poder. It means poder. Y lo podemos utilizar como un verbo normal. Pero eh, cuando decimos un verbo modal es porque nos está dando... Por ejemplo, en la oración de sentence number one, if I say, do you know what, do you know what beat means? ¿Alguno de ustedes sabe qué significa beat? Derrotar. 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 Por ejemplo, en este caso, en la oración número uno, dice, she can sometimes beat me in a race. Ella puede algunas veces derrotarme en una carrera. Le llamamos en este caso verbo modal porque nos está dando. Eh, how can I say this? Nos está dando como. Podría decirse que tendría que entender cuál es la, el objetivo principal de la oración. Creo que es lo que le quiere dar a entender en la primera oración. Por ejemplo, ahí ella le está dando a entender que le gana en una carrera. O sea, le, lo está derrotando. Entonces, ahí puede entender cuál es el verbo principal y cuál no es el verbo principal. Exacto, exactamente. Sí, esto solo el, 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 le llamamos verbo modal porque solo nos da una clara idea de algo que podemos o no podemos hacer. Yo puedo utilizar... Lo pudiera, digamos, como un verbo auxiliar, como para yo entenderlo. Sí. If you can notice, si lo puedes, si lo puedes ver acá en, en la fórmula, la fórmula lo llama auxiliar y lo llama auxiliar para que ustedes lo entiendan. Yo como les dije, mm -hmm. en gramática es que nosotros le llamamos modo verb en gramática, pero para que ustedes entiendan en una clase lo pueden llamar auxiliar. Si a ustedes se las hace más fácil, lo podemos llamar Verbo auxiliar, ¿sí? Pero en gramática, okay, lo que tiene es model verb. Simplemente. Okay. Okay. Oh, sí. Thanks, thanks, thanks. So, um, now, ahora, ¿cuál es la pregunta, o what is the question that we are going to use in order to use an adjective or another of frequency? ¿Cómo vamos a saber cuándo utilizar un adverbio de frecuencia? Very easy. La pregunta que alguien nos va a hacer es, how often? ¿Sí? How often or how often? Sí, ya sabemos que podemos decir la de both pronunciations. ¿Ok? So, esta pregunta, how often, is going to ask us about the frequency of an action or something or an activity that we do. Example, if I ask uh, Mr. Elvis, how often do you brush your teeth? Si yo le pregunto a él como un ejemplo, how often do you brush your teeth? Que tan a menudo, esa, pre, esa parte, how often, eso significa, que tan a menudo do you brush your teeth? Que tan a menudo te cepillan los dientes. Entonces ahí va a venir él y en la respuesta, in the answer, él tiene que utilizar un adverbio de frecuencia. Why? Because the question that you are asking, it's necessary for you to use an adverb of frequency. ¿Sí? Él me puede decir, ok, teacher, I brush or I always brush my teeth. Or I never brush my teeth. Or I sometimes brush my teeth. ¿Sí? Mm -hmm. always going to be necessary to use an adverb of frequency. Sí, sí, sí. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Tenemos que saber que in English, no solo, we do not only have adverbs of frequency. También tenemos palabras de frecuencia. ¿Cuáles van a ser ellas? Por ejemplo, once, que significa una vez. ¿Sí? A partir de ahora ya no va a ser permitido que ustedes me digan one time. Si sí hay excepciones, pero cuando las estamos utilizando como palabras de frecuencia, en inglés decimos once, una vez. Once, 
para decir dos veces decimos twice. ¿Sí? Twice. Luego de ahí para allá, de la tercera vez, sí podemos decir three times, four times, five times, six times, and so on and so on. Yes? But también podemos de decir como una vez a la semana, por ejemplo, once a week, twice a month, dos veces a la semana, once a year, once a day, three times a day, three times a week, three times a month, three times a year. So are you guys understanding? Estamos entendiendo esta parte. Are we clear? Yes. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes. Perfect. So here we have another words, otras palabras de frecuencia. Yo también puedo decir every evening, cada mañana, cada tarde, cada noche, every evening, every morning, every night, every day. Sí, algo que les quiero decir, hay veces tendemos, we tend to um, poner estas dos palabras juntas, every day. Sí, every day, no, we have to separate it. We have to separate it. Yes, go ahead. Disculpe, ¿qué significa every? I'm sorry. ¿Qué significa every? Every, cada. 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 Every evening, every morning, every night, every day, every weekend, every Saturday, every Monday, every week, every year. Yes? For example, we have some examples right here. Mary cooks every day. Maria cocina todos los días. I play tennis every Sunday. Yo juego tennis cada domingo. ¿Sí? Por eso le llamamos palabras de frecuencia. ¿Por qué? Porque ellas nos están diciendo con qué frecuencia o cada cuánto tiempo nosotros realizamos esa acción o esa actividad. Are we clear? Teacher, y en el primer ejemplo, every day, dice todos los días. Every. No es, ajá, y en la segunda, ¿por qué cambia? Porque okay. cambia a cada. Because uh, they have, en inglés, no sé si se han fijado, dependiendo del contexto, una palabra puede tener muchos significados. And I know that that's kind of difficult. Entiendo que a veces puede ser complicado. So in this case, every, la palabra en sí, every, significa cada. ¿Sí? Pero cuando lo juntamos con day, significa todos los días. La palabra en sí, ella solita, significa cada. Pero solo cuando la juntamos con la palabra day, significa todos los días. De ahí, siempre cuando esté ella solita con otra palabra que no sea day, va a significar cada. Okay. Pero también significa cada día o solamente todos los días. We can say that, eh, si, si lo traducimos a nuestro idioma, nosotros podemos decir cada día también. Recuérdense que esa es la traducción a nuestro idioma, but not in English, ¿ok? So, is there any question? ¿Alguna pregunta? No, no, no. So, vamos a ver si es cierto que no hay ninguna pregunta. Yo le voy a preguntar ahora a ustedes, ya que ustedes no tienen ninguna pregunta, ¿verdad? So, let me see. All right. How do we say rara vez? Rarely. Rarely. Rarely ever. Is there hardly ever as well? Both of them. Okay, great. Let me see. What are, cuáles son los adverbios? What are the adverbs that we can use at the beginning of the sentence? ¿Cuáles son los que podemos utilizar al inicio de una oración? Usually. Usually. 
Normally. Normally. Often. Always. 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 Occasionally. Seldom. Often. Seldom. Early ever. ¿Podemos utilizar seldom at the beginning, al inicio? No. No, no. teacher. No, 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 teacher. So, which are the ones that we cannot ¿Eh? use at the beginning? ¿Cuáles son los que no podemos? Always. 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 Ever. 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 Never. 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 Now, let me ask, can I use never in a negative sentence? ¿Puedo utilizar never in a negative sentence? No. 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 No, no, no. Why not? Ever. Ever. Porque Don't. no se puede negar. Sería una ¿no? doble negación en la oración. Doble negación. Ay, hoy sí, ¿verdad? Hoy sí estamos despiertos. So, let's see. Um. If I'm using the verb be, where do I have to place the adverb of practice? After the verb be. After the verb be. If I am not using the verb be, but I'm using another verb, where do I have to place the verb, the adverb of practice? Before. After the, verb, princip the principal verb. Before the main, main verb. Before the main verb. Main okay. Excellent. Very good. If I'm using an auxiliary or if I'm using a model verb, where do I have to place the adverb of frequency? Mm. Can. Can. Work. Can. Work. 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 Okay. No, listen, listen to the question. If I am using a filter or a model verb, where do I have to place the adverb of frequency? Del verbo auxiliar. Del verbo auxiliar. Posterior al auxiliar. Excellent. That was the answer. Okay, very good. Um, and the last part, what is the question that I have to ask to someone in order to use the adverbs of practice? How often? How often? How often? Okay. How often. How often? Do I have or existing palabras de frecuencia? Yes. 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 Can you tell yes. me? Yes. Can you stop some example? Every. 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 What else? ¿Qué más? ¿Cómo digo una vez? Really? How do I say una vez in English? Once. 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 If I say once a month, is that correct? Yes. 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 yes that's right. Yes. Perfect. So, guys, um, I'm going to send you the presentation through the WhatsApp group, and I need you to work on the exercises because of the time we cannot complete them today. Okay. But okay. this is your last homework. Okay. Esta es la última tarea because tomorrow. Mañana it is, um, bueno, we just have two more classes. La del día de mañana and Thursday y con esa termina. Okay? So uh, please try to work on that, on the exercises of this, uh, of this class. And uh, tomorrow we are going to start with that, okay? 
Vamos okay. a empezar con eso. Or if you know, if you know, let me see. Si no, lo que vamos a hacer es that if you can uh, work during the day or if you can send me some pictures through the group so I can uh, check that up, okay? So um, that's going to be all for today, guys. Thank you so much once again for attending to the class. Do not forget to complete the platform. Porque ya estamos a poco días para terminar. A este punto ya tendrían que haber eh, pues casi terminado la plataforma. ¿Sí? I know that we have some issues. Entiendo que estamos teniendo algunos problemas. But I will get in contact with, with technical support. So we can see if we can figure that out. Okay? So thank you so much, guys, once again for attending to the class and have a good night. Okay? Thank you, teacher. Okay, thank, okay, you. thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Good night.